Hello and welcome to this webinar, The Sea Language and What is Wrong with It, part of the Why Misra Matters playlist. I'm Andrew Banks, Technical Specialist at LDRA. In this short webinar, we'll look at the sea language and what's wrong with it. We'll look at the history, some of the common pitfalls, and then highlight one way forward. Well, as many of you will know, it was first created way back when in 1972 by Dennis Ritchie at Bell Labs. And it was written with the Unix operating system in mind. Only four years later, Stephen Johnson also at Bell produced Lint, the first C static analyzer, because even then it was accepted that what was a generally accepted part of the C language had a lot of problems. And then 1978, perhaps one of the most famous books in computing, the C programming language, Kernighan and Ritchie C was published, which laid down a lot of the rules of how people learnt to write C code. In 1989, the C language was standardised for the first time. ANSI C, as it's universally known, or C89. But standards don't stay the same. A year later, the ANSI C was fast-tracked as an ISO standard. It became known as C90. It's exactly the same as C89. This was then tweaked a little bit in 1995, a fairly big update in 1999, another update in 2011 to add a lot of features that many of us still don't understand how they work. And then a couple of years back, a small technical courage and in orbit name. It's called C18 because it was officially published in January 2018. But the, the hash define that identifies that version actually says 2017 because it was so close to being published in 2017, didn't quite make it. Now, the C language is very widespread. As I mentioned, it was written to allow the Unix operating system to be written. It became very quickly adopted for many, many development applications. But despite its popularity, there's actually a lot wrong with it. It's very easy to misuse. It's very easy to write obfuscated code. Hop over to Stack Overflow, and they have a whole forum dedicated to people who can write the most unreadable code. There's a lot about the language that's simply misunderstood and quite a few of the features that people use very often work almost by luck rather than judgment because the way the language behaves is not how many people expect. Quite important in the safety critical world, there's a lack of runtime error checking. But perhaps the biggest problem is the ISO standard itself is incomplete. What do I mean by that? The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is one of my favourite books, and there's lots and lots of very useful quotes. But we demand rigidly defined areas of doubt and uncertainty is really, really applicable for the C standard. It has behaviour that the standard defines as unspecified, 61 instances. It has behaviour that the standard defines as undefined. It doesn't tell you what to do, it just says, this is undefined. There's 211 instances of that. There's 120 cases where it says the behaviour is implementation defined. The compiler can do what it likes, as long as it documents what it does. And then a small number of cases that are locale dependent. Now, most of those are linked to the, the environment. So it's whether you use a comma or a period 
to delimit thousands and millions, your currency symbol and such like. But put those together and that's a lots of cases where you have an incomplete undefined language. That can be a problem. And, you know, the answer for some people is actually don't you see. And for many years, the DOD in America mandated ADA for the very simple reason that C could not be trusted. That restriction was lifted largely because of Misra C and the Joint Strike Fighter project. Actually, their coding guidelines are based on Misra C. So, in summary, as you saw earlier, despite its popularity, there are several drawbacks with the C language. Misra C can help you avoid those pitfalls, and we will look into what Misra C is and how it can help you in further webinars. For more information, please contact LGRA through all the usual social media channels. I'm Andrew Banks. Thank you for listening and I hope you found this useful.